Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about masking options in Luminar AI. I'm going to show you the different types of masks that are available and how to put them to best use in your photos. Hello and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about masking. I want to walk you through how to use all of the different masking options in Luminar AI. We're going to talk about the brush, radial and gradient masks. I'll show you how to copy and paste them between tools and how to make use of our local masking tool. We're going to cover a lot of information in a pretty short time, so let's get started. Up on the, on the screen, I've got a really pretty picture here. Kind of wish I was there right now. I'm going to apply a quick template to this. I'm here in the templates tab. I'm going to go down to scenery, use my very favorite here, Fast Fix, and it just pops the color. It gives me a better starting point for this photo. From there, I'm going to switch over to my edit tab and we're going to jump initially into our local masking because that's the easiest way to see the different types of masks that we have available. Now, it's worth noting that every single tool or almost every single tool in Luminar AI can be individually masked. And then we can also add local masking instances. So I'm going to click on add, go to basic, and we're going to start with a very simple brush mask. What I'm going to do is make sure I'm clicked on my brush. I'm going to zoom in really close on the dog's eyes and we're going to just add a little bit of sparkle to that pup. So I'm going to zoom into 200%. We're going to take a look at the eyes and I'm going to grab my brush, make my brush size a little bit bigger with that bracket key and I'm just going to paint in right over his eyes. Now we have, you know, great eye tools for humans, but unfortunately they are human aware. So if we want to enhance animal eyes, this is the way we have to do it. Go in there and paint the mask. Typically when I do this, I'm going to bring up the exposure a little bit, probably open up the shadows, add a good bit of structure here just to add some contrast and a little bit more contrast there for good measure. Now let's take a look here at the before and the after. It just makes that dog's eyes pop a little bit more. I might back off a little bit there on the exposure. It looks like I went a little too far and I think that looks pretty much perfect. So that's in a nutshell how you use the paint mask or the brush. If you end up getting a little bit overzealous with your brush strokes, you can always click to the erase tool and back out of anything that you overdid. Let's go ahead and move on to a radial mask. From here, I'm gonna to click to add and basic. And this time I'm going to switch here in my drop down menu to a radial mask. Now, before we go ahead and draw our mask, the first thing you wanna pay attention to is do you wanna affect the outside of the circle or the inside of the circle? In this instance, I wanna affect the outside of the circle. We're gonna use it as kind of like a vignette, but it's gonna be a smart vignette in that we have a lot of other controls that we can use to really refine the results. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag my circle here right over our subject. And I'm going to adjust the size of this and I'm gonna make this a little bit more oval shaped. And I'm gonna move my mouse just outside of the circle here and I can rotate it and get a nice shape here that really covers what I want. I can even pull this transition in a little bit closer. There we go, I think that's a really nice placement. And now that we have our mask, I can pull down on the exposure a little bit. Let's see here, go ahead and darken that down. And we can also pull down a little bit on our structure and that's gonna soften some of those details in the background. That's looking pretty nice. And we can even pop the vibrance a little bit there to give a little bit more color to what's going on here in the background. So it's like a vignette, but you have a lot more control over the size, the shape, and a few other parameters other than just adjusting the exposure of those edges. So this is kind of like your vignette tool on steroids. It's really fun and it does a really great job. From there, we wanna go ahead and let's try a gradient mask. And now I'm gonna go up to the add button again. We'll go to basic and we'll wait for that to load. There we go. We'll go to our drop down menu and we'll choose a gradient mask. Now my goal here is I want to darken down the background here. I want to pull down a little bit on the detail a little bit further, give it even more shallow depth of field look. So I'm going to grab my gradient and I'm going to draw that down. You don't have to have a completely straight line, but I'm going to draw that down right across that area. So everything in red is being affected and everything outside of the red is being protected. So I'll go ahead and let go of that. Now, if I go up to the ellipses menu here and I click on show mask, We'll notice that some of our subject here is being hit with that mask. If you want to clean that up, you can absolutely do that. From there, I'm going to go to my gradient where it says gradient mask, and I'm going to switch back to paint. 
and grab that erase tool. And now I can adjust my brush size with the bracket keys on my keyboard and I can erase that mask from our subject. Because we're not necessarily wanting to darken down her or the dog or pull back on any of the details there in her hat or on the dog's ears or anything like that. So we're gonna get in here, clean that up a bit. There we go, maybe a little bit better here on that edge. And now we've protected her. So let's go ahead and turn that mask overlay off. And now we can darken down that background, bring that down a little bit more. And we can pull down on the structure and this is gonna give us an even more intense shallow depth of field look. She's perfectly in focus, our foreground is in focus, but that background is dropping off really, really nicely. So you have a lot of control with what you can do with each one of these masks. So let's take a look here to kind of recap what we have. First, we started off with our brush mask where we adjust the dog's eyes. We can turn that off and then back on. And you see, it's just that little pop, that little bit of sparkle there in his eyes. With our radial mask, we were able to really bring the attention into our subject, that woman holding the dog. Go ahead and turn that off and then back on again. You can see how that just draws you right in. And then the darkening of that background, we can go ahead and turn that off and then back on again. And it just, all of those individual steps work so well to draw us further into the image. Let's take a look here at the overall before and after. I'm gonna click out of my mask, go into the side-by-side -side view here, and we can see what a difference those few steps made to really make this image come to life. Now, let's say you have any of these masks that you just created. What if you wanna apply those to some of the other tools? Let's go ahead and go to our mask for the background here. What I can do is go to the ellipses menu and I can copy that. And now I can go to any other basic ma masking instance or over to my tools and to any of these tools to go ahead and apply that mask there. So let's say we wanna add a bit of glow to that background. I can go ahead and pull that glow up there. Go ahead and let that apply. And then once you activate a tool, we have our masking brush here that comes that becomes available and then we can go to our ellipses paste that mask and that'll apply that effect just to that background we can then adjust the opacity the amount all of these things and make this really look cool so I can darken that back down we still get some of that really nice glow there in the background I think that looks great it almost makes it look like the Sun is hitting this part of the mountain here really really beautiful so you can copy and paste those masks between a variety of tools Let's go ahead and take a look again at our overall before and after. I hope this gives you guys a good idea of what you can accomplish very quickly and easily by using a brush, radial, or gradient mask in your images. It opens up a bunch of new options and really can make your creative, creativity come alive. So if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. We always love seeing that. Our producers love it as well. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get those answered for you in the next couple of days. I want to wish you guys a great rest of your day. Make sure you stop by tomorrow for our Ask Me Anything New Artist Friday. Vanelli and I will be here to answer your questions about Luminar AI. So if you have questions that you'd like to see answered, make sure you pop those into the comments below and we'll get those answered for you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.